somehow Tom Hanks knew I loved that book. And um, the man who wrote the, the screenplay uh, had worked for Tom's company um, on Band of Brothers. And we got put together by Playtone. I remember reading the book around the time where I, had, I was getting divorced, so my, the penny dropped for me that I wasn't going to be able to protect my son from everything. That, and that's a moment when you're a parent, when, you, when you're used to protecting them, and now I, I, I can't. You know, he's going to suffer in a certain way, and that, and that he's going to have to. That's part of growing up, and uh, there's a lot of wisdom in this particular book ab about that. Not necessarily preachy wisdom. I really like that the most of the grown-ups, when asked questions about why are why does life have to be this way, they don't have good answers. They say basically, faith will save you. And I, I thought so many of the themes of the movie were beautiful. I, I love that the book is dedicated to Saroyan's mother. And in the dedication of the book, The Human Comedy, he says, for, the, for, for you, Mom, who told me so many beautiful stories, here's one for you. And there are just so many beautiful sentiments all around that piece of work. So, And, and I felt that it was a, it's basically a very simple story about complicated things, and that would have a filmmaker's equivalent. You know, these are, it's clearly not a complex, it's, it's not shot in a complex no. way. There's a lot of tableaus. It's very, it's, it's cut in, a, in an old-fashioned way. Yeah. And... Um, all, all of those things were, I thought, were in my wheelhouse. I've, I've done something like 37 films, and, and at certain points throughout this 23 days that we shot, we, we did this movie in 23 days, sure. there was a part of every director came up, you know, like how entertained Rob Reiner was by Billy Crystal and myself, or how fun Nora Ephron sets were, or how, what an artist Jane Campion is. There's so, so many yeah. teeny little things that experience on a film set gives you. I was never really surprised by what I, I didn't know. I was surprised by what I did know by osmosis yeah. from all these different yeah. directors. I'm a very diligent person, when, especially when I don't know something. So I, I, I spent a lot of time with the script and more time with the script and more time with the script and more time with the script before. So every single scene I had parsed it out in so many ways and cut and repasted and moved things around and got to know what was my allegiance to the thing on the page. And then when you get to a set, you no longer have an allegiance to the thing on the page. The pictures have the, take the priority. And that was, you know, we did everything so quickly too. We maybe had three weeks of pre-production and we didn't have very much money and we had very little time. And I just buckled down and did it. And more than anything, I was always, again, I was never surprised by what I didn't know. I assumed I would just have to learn fast and make mistakes and it's an imperfect film. But um, I was mostly surprised by what I did know, how much I did know about how to talk to actors or how a frame would be more effective, you know, to have put Homer over here and let that be a silhouette. And by the way, I just want to say how beautiful uh, Alex is, Homer, yeah, because he turned 16 on the day we finished shooting. So he was in this perfect moment, like a perfect autumn day where you look to the left and it's summer and you look to the right and it's fall, right? His voice was changing, and the fact that he turned 16 on that day made us, I think, infuse the movie. There's a lot of love in the movie, and I always feel it when I watch it, that we loved him so much for doing his first role and finishing it on the day we stopped, you know, on the day he turned 16. It just felt so right, you know. And we didn't have a lot of money to move our camp, yeah. to move our base camps or move our trucks, so we, we had to find a town um, that actually it's shot very often for Civil War, American right. Civil War, like um, Spielberg shot there for Lincoln, and there's a television show called Turn that shoots there, and very often shot for like 1870. And we just knew it would be less money to make things look newer. <laughs> it's, right. it's, so we, everything had to do with the budget is a writer, yeah. you know, on your film. But the, and I kept saying to everybody, we better shoot the sky, boys, because that's going to give us scope. We're going to sh make sure the shadows are compelling because that will give us cinema, really. We had to, and if you notice, there's less and less extras in the movie, and that's partly due <laughs> <laughs> to, like, an, a Bogdanovich influence and partly due to we didn't have a lot of money. So I love being around children. 
And these kids, none of them were actors, you know, they were local kids. And we would say, oh, what this passel of kids would look a certain way together and let them always wear the same outfit. And I read a lot, actually, about the little rascals, about Hal Roach, about how he directed those kids. They, they always seemed so alive and not actory. And so I did a lot of what he did, which you, get, you don't give them all the information. You give them some. You tell them what the game is. And you just kind of keep them on their toes so nobody... They're not acting, and, but also kids believe a game, so if you say that. And then a lot of the teenagers in the movies are actually friends of mine and my friend's children. And the, the three soldiers who, um, who kiss the girls, the, those three guys and my son Jack are all in a comedy team together. So I, I knew all these kids, too. So that was kind of cheating, but still. <laughs> I think the movie and the story isn't cynical. And in this time, when it's so easy to be cynical, I love that it's also not too sentimental. It's a strong movie, you know, and it's about the value of life and the value of innocence. And I think these days we wish it away in the modern world. We wish away something so precious, right? Kids want to grow up too fast. And this value of this one boy, this one soldier, who, who affects so many, the worth of a life, and it's a, it's a poem, really, about that, I think, I hope. Jack, my son, it, like I said, he's on a, he's on a, a show, an HBO show in, um, in the States called Vinyl. He, but his whole life, you know, he's been dressing up as Buzz Lightyear or something else, right? You come home, and he and his friends are dressed as, one time they were doing, a, they, they shot a little video, and each of them were a different cereal box hero. <laughs> <laughs> like tricks rabbits or whatever they were doing a caper movie he's done his 10,000 hours you know my, my son has worked really hard he's a hard worker and so I was thinking to myself how not weird it was to be directing him how first of all how great he was and then I'd be leaning in and there'd be all these you know there's a big crew and a, and a camera systems and mics and everything else and I'm directing him and I think it's not weird at all just seems like a continuation, a little continuation of what we've always done or in some way. You know, he's a very playful person and very, very fun to be around. And what was the hardest thing the for challenge, me? Challenge, challenge again. I, honestly, I think it was the kind of single-minded focus that you, it's, it was like 20 months of work on one thing. And it surprised me how, I mean, the fiercest I ever am is a, as a mother. Yeah. And then I became very fierce about this. And that, uh, that surprised me. It was hard to have that much ferocity and try to be cool. <laughs> you know, with the people that you get, the professional people you have to be cool with. So, and I also want to say, before we stop, the other great favor that was done for us on the movie was John Mellencamp's music. Yeah. He, I read him the script one time, and he wrote half of the music. Because I read him the script, he was so inspired by it. He wrote... Um, some of the songs so that we could have Leon Redbone record them so that the source music and the score could fl could could kind of weave throughout the movie, which is a very old-fashioned way of scoring something. And then he saw the movie, and he and the band did the rest of everything in about 30 hours. I mean, amazing. The, amazing. Yeah. Really great. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Thank Meg. you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mark.